I, I missed you. Yes. So, so you. yeah. Thank you. So, so um, so where was I? So I'm explaining that as I'm giving the background to concertism. So as we all know, there are three types of politicians on the African continent. There are the, polit the, the conservative politicians and their goal, as far as Africa's wealth is concerned, is that they want the wealth of Africa for only themselves, if possible, and then their immediate family. They're not really interested in, in, in the wealth of Africa being shared amongst all Africans. They are not interested in that. And because they are under the domination of the imperialists and neocolonialists, they share that wealth with the imperialists. So those are the conservatives. The wealth of Africa for only one individual or a few people. And these people are, sometimes you hear them called Sir, so so and so, Sir, Nana Foriata, Sir this, Sir that. Then we have the liberal politicians uh, who do not agree with the conservative politicians, but who are also not interested that the wealth of Africa should be used for all Africans. So they want the wealth of Africa to be used for a minority. And that minority can be their nationality. So if they are Kikuyus, for instance, in Kenya, they only want the Kikuyus to be in power and to dominate and, and, and uh, enjoy the wealth ex ex exclusively to a large extent. Or if they are Uganda, they want the Nyankoles, which is where Museveni comes from, it's a Nyankole. They were the Nyankoles to basically dominate um, wealth management, creation, and so on. So, and all, all, all the minority could be uh, not just their nationality, it could be a class, a, a business, a, a group of business people um, called, uh, if you like, uh, capitalists, if you like, or it could be a region of the country you know, uh, but it's never the whole country. So those are the, the liberal politicians. They want the wealth for a minority. Then at the other end are the progressives. And the progressive politicians want the wealth of Africa for all Africans, the majority or the majority of Africans. So the progressives will go for things like free education for all. Uh, the conservatives will send their children to to the West or outside to go and have exclusive university education. Uh, the minority will keep their children in the country. That's the liberals. They'll keep their children in the country to educate, educate them. They might send them outside, uh, but you know, to a large extent, uh, they are not as the con conservatives are. Um, so the progressives are who we are. So consensism is a progressive philosophy and ideology. It is about the total liberation, unification and development of Africa. So what I'm saying is that when somebody says I'm a Pan-Africanist, we have to be clear what type of Pan-Africanist they are. Because members of the African Union will tell you they're also Pan-Africanists. But the leaders in the African Union are not progressives. They are not interested in seeing the wealth of Africa being used for all Africans. There are people there like the Mo Moroccans, uh, where it's uh, governed by a king who is a conservative. And then we have liberals like Museveni in Uganda. Um, and so most of the leaders are either conservatives or liberals. We progressive have lost political power since 1966. And the progressives have been on the back foot. And the progressives have never found a way to organize themselves to take back political power since the overthrow of Kwame Nkrumah and Pan-Africanism in 1966. We are in 19, uh, we are in 2023 and we have still not made a headway. So there's a need for us to understand the politics that we want to be involved in. And there's a need for us then to be armed with the philosophy and ideology that we need because the battle or the war is a brutal one. And they will come at you and they will aim for your, 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 your soul, your heart, and your mind. 
And that is where you have to be properly armed. And you have to be armed with the philosophical and ideological content necessary to fight the war. Okay. There used to be a saying that the pen is mightier than the sword. And I think the thinking there is that when you have a sword and you are fighting an enemy, you can kill them. Yeah. You kill them with a the sword, and that's it. And that is, I suppose, uh easy thing to do if you can kill them. But if you don't want to kill them because you need them alive, then the sword is not good. You don't need a sword. You need to find a different, a different weapon. And so that is where the pen comes in. And the pen today is in different ways. Publications, social media, the WhatsApp that we use, even the Zoom online we're using now, those are all ways for the pen to work. So that is the background. And the book Consciousism that uh, Nkrumah wrote is a distillation of the uh, philosophy and ideology that our forefathers as Africans have bestowed on the world. Because remember that there is no such thing as Western philosophy or, or, or ideology. Yeah? yeah, there is such a thing as, as Western ideology, conservatism, liberalism, uh, social reformism, Marxism. Those are Western ideologies. But in terms of philosophy, there, is, there, there, there are only two philosophies. They are idealism or materialism. These philosophies were given to us, were given to humanity uh, by, by Africa. Um, Western philosophy is basically African philosophy repackaged. They did not really create anything. They just took our philosophy and then they repackaged it and call it Western philosophy. But the West have never denied that um, ancient Greece is the birthplace of Western philosophy. They have never denied it. But the Greeks then tell us that it is the Africans that educated them. And let's remember that some of the so-called Greeks were actually Africans. Yeah. So it's like saying that somebody who is British but is black. Not all British people are black, are, are white people. Yeah. Some British people are black, some are Asians. And in those days, when you say you were Greek, you could be an Asian, you could be a black, you could be white, and so on. People have people, someone make a mistake. And when they hear Greece, they think it's white, but it's not always white. Um, so that's a background. So consciousness is a distillation of the philosophical and ideological content needed to fight this war. As far as I know, I'm sorry to be corrected. As far as I know, there is no other distilled Pan-African philosophy and ideology that progressives can use to fight the conservatives and the liberals. I don't know of any, because Pan-Africanism is an African thing. It, is, it comes from the African soil. It is a creation of the sons and daughters of the soil. And Krumah himself was born in the village. He grew up in the village. He was, if you like, a village boy. You understand? So he came from what you would call traditional Africa. You know, he wasn't born in the city like some of us today. He was born in the village and, and grew up in the village. And he became a school teacher, you know, before Namdi Azikiwe of Nigeria, who was then uh, one of the uh, writers of what, is, what used to be called the West African Post, encouraged him to uh, go outside and learn. And, 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 when, and when Nkrumah left um, the then Gold Coast, his mind was to find a tool to defeat colonialism. So in 1945, when he came from America, to England to meet George Padmore, he then had written, he wrote this book called Towards Colonial Freedom. And that short book was the basis for the struggle for the liberation of Africa from 1945. And that conference in 1945 was the last conference before the next one in 1958 on African soil. And that is where 
uh, people like uh, Robert Subuku of South Africa were inspired to start the Pan-Africanist Congress in South Africa. So, so our, our heritage is very rich. Our heritage is rich. Materialism, not the, the, the one that people talk about when they say you are too materialistic. That's not what we mean. We mean philosophical materialism. This philosophy um, is the creation of Africans. You understand? Which is we who created it. It wasn't created dialectical, if you like, dialectical uh, uh, materialism or dialectics as the broad topic, dialectics. That in itself was created by Africa. We created it. It is ours. And so, pan, so, so Pan-Africanism and its philosophy and ideology consensism comes from the African soil. It is our creation. It is a philosophy and ideology from the African soil. Nkrumah himself said he was a Marxist, but he never wrote a Marxist philosophy and ideology for us. He wrote an African one for us. And that is why consensism um, uh, is, is viewed as the, the authentic African philosophy and ideology. So it is our, it's ours, it is our spear. And with it, we can fight and we are and be confident that we can win. Because there is, as far as I can see, there is no philosophical ideological weapon that can be used to defeat us if we are armed with consensism or with pan-Africanism. There's no philosophy and ideology, as far as I know, that can defeat us because of the power of this philosophy and ideology. So that is a, a, a bit of background for some of us who have joined uh, for the first time. Uh, I don't usually, I don't usually, yes, Mike, you will. Uh, I don't usually um, give a background, but when we get new people sometimes who don't come back, it's something necessary to give a background so that people understand where we are coming from uh, and so on. Uh, Michael, who said he wanted to say something, yeah. is, is, one of, is one of us. Uh, Michael has been with us oh, for many years now, and, 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 and Michael can take a whole class of consciousness. He helped um, to put together a dictionary, which, which, which we should make available to all of us. So, if, so Michael has put together a dictionary for us, and, and, um, and, and yeah, so, um, so Michael wants to add something uh, to, to all that I've said. So Michael, uh, carry on, yes. thank you. Thank you. Um, yes, you did mention philosophical materialism, but I'm trying to relate it to what we've read so far. And the mere fact that Thales said the basis of all matter was water is, 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 is an expression or a, a way to express is an aspect of philosophical materialism. That's what mm -hmm. I would like to say in relating it to what it, it, rather than be seen as an abstract idea, the idea mm -hmm. that everything is based on water, not spirit, but water, not the Berkeley part of it, but the Thales part of it is philosophical mm -hmm. materialism. There's more to that's it, it, but that's just an yeah. example. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, excellent. And 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 Barclay, George Barclay, that is, his his example. He said that um, the fundamental, the cosmic raw material was was spirits and their ideas. And and as Michael has been, uh, was saying, Thales um, said the cosmic raw material is water. Um, but if you see water as hydrogen and, and and oxygen, what he was really saying was that matter is the basis of the universe. Um, those two philosophers, Salas and Berkeley, Nkrumah uses to launch the, our, 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 the understanding that we need in terms of philosophy in retrospect. So the chapter that we are dealing with is philosophy in retrospect, meaning that we are looking at the heritage that we have, what is the legacy that we have, before in the next chapter we don't move forward. So this is what has been bequeathed to us as Africans. Where do we go from here? You understand? So the book is sequenced in a way that is very, very, very uh, interesting and exciting. Um, so on the screen, therefore, is the um, page we are, we are at, or we are at. And we have already read this paragraph um, uh, already. 
and we have we've started uh, looking at it. For those who have joined us again for the first time, in this class, we read a paragraph, and then all of us, one after the other, we share our views uh, on our thinking. What do we think about what has been read? We focus on thinking because it's a cognitive war. So your thinking, you know, this, this, uh, uh, this thing called the head, which really is a, it's, it's a bone, you know, it's a tissue bone, you know, inside it is, is liquid and our brains are uh, basically soft, soft tissue floating in this liquid. That is where the highest wars take place. And, and that is linked to our hearts, our minds. And that's where everything is controlled from in terms of thinking. So the thinking sometimes, if not always, affects the feeling as well. You know, thinking affects how you feel. So that's where the war is taking place. So I'm going to read this paragraph again before we move to the next paragraph as at, uh, to let uh, other people read. So what we do is any of us can read. Nobody is special in terms of reading. Uh, but as you know, some read better than others, but uh, we don't mind. If you want to take 10 minutes to read a paragraph, it's okay with us. In this space, we want you to feel free. Nobody should feel pressured. Nobody should feel that what they want to say is stupid or silly. You know, we are here to support one another to learn and to understand and to share. So we are all equal in this class. <clears throat> all of us are equal as Africans. And what we all think is equally important. It doesn't matter what you think. Your thinking is just as important as the thinking of the next person. So no one should, we encourage you not to start your sentences with, um, with demeaning yourself or talking yourself down uh, and say, oh, I, I don't think what I'm, I'm about to say uh, is important or I don't think what I'm about to say uh, makes meaning. Don't start your sentences by talking yourself down. Just share what you think and then and then other people will share and then we all share, yeah? So it's like eating, yeah? We are eating from the same plate. So I'm going to read this paragraph and then we'll move on. And once I've read it, we won't discuss it though, but then we'll move to the next paragraph which, some, which somebody else will read and then we'll discuss one after the other. So here I go. Um, uh, Pigeon, let me know if uh, my reading is coming out clear. In the urgency of the second question of philosophy, is that clear, Pigeon? It's clear, you're clear. Good, right. So in the urgency of the second question of philosophy, can be detected a certain anxiety about the principle of sufficient reason. According to this principle, everything has an explanation why it is as it is and not otherwise. Has a cosmic raw material a cause or explanation or has it not? To deem it not to have one is to enter a plea of exception against the principle of sufficient reason. Now, the pressure to withhold a cause from the cosmic raw material that which is the matrix of the universe and from which springs everything else which there is or can be takes its beginning from the fact that whatever cause is proposed for it must be vexed by persistent problems. So that's a reading we did last week and we went through it. That was excellent. 
Yeah, and we explained, thank you. And we explained what the vexation is of by persistent problems. Um, I only said it because somebody asked, but Nkrumah himself does explain. I will move on to the next paragraph. There's only two lines of the next paragraph on the screen. So, uh, Mr. Ida, are you ready to read? If not, it's a, it's a charade, ready to read. Shireen, Ida, are you either of you ready to read? Okay. If you're not ready yet, then let's go to um, Brother. I can read. But I can. Before, yeah. Is that Brother Jete? Yeah. Yeah, hold, hold on with your reading. Before you read, let me welcome Brother Renumi, uh, Brother Mkanwi, uh, Fufukwa Ambe. Uh, he is the one that um, has his name as the Ministry of Spirit, Spirit, Spiritologists, um, great brother. Uh, also welcome uh, brother Kamal Chinadi. Uh, oh, he's, he's just gone off. Um, let's start to welcome him. Yeah. So I've just welcomed um, um, you. I've already welcomed uh, Sister Lawrence. I've welcomed... Um, um, I did work on Sister Ida. If not, Sister Ida, I'm welcoming you now. So everyone, welcome. Um, so, yeah, so let's uh, continue. So, Brother Ajete. Um, uh, um, excuse me, Brother Kwame. Can I just tell you yes. something? Sorry, my phone was frozen, so I couldn't, uh, but it's just oh. unfrozen. But um, I don't have a lot of um, power left. So you might data. find that I just, oh, no, not the data, it's a uh, charge on my phone. So you might find... Okay. But my phone keeps freezing, so sorry. I think it, you won't hear much from me today. Okay. And then uh, when um, my charge goes, I'll be off. Yeah, and then and then put it on charge and come back. <laughs> uh, I'm not at home. That's my problem. So okay, I don't have right. a charge. Next time, take your charger with you. <laughs> take your charger with you next time. I I, I, I do all the time. <laughs> yes. Yes. All right. Sorry no 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 that. worries, sister. Thank ah, you. no worries. No worries. You're welcome. Okay, Brother Jete. Yes, there Brother Jete go. wants to read for us. Yeah. Brother Jete, please read, but we ask that you read slowly. Yeah? Don't rush. Yeah. Yeah, I'll try. So I'll try can, because you see, uh, the way I digest information, I find your, your reading a bit too slow. Yes, but. So I'll try and read at the pace. I'll try and uh, read at the pace, and you tell me if it's comfortable, okay? I, I will. As we are reading uh, for all of us, yeah. Uh, it's important that we take our time and read so people can digest what they are reading. It That's depends. why we, we tend to go. So yeah, yeah. Read, read, as, yeah, read as you want. I'll tell you whether okay, you're going goes. to fast yeah, or let slow. Me yeah, see, carry let's on. see how it goes. All right. Well, here we go. According to, so, according to the hypothesis that we seek to explain is the basic raw material. My proposal cause for it can only itself arise. Yeah, any proposal, read what is on the screen, Brother Jete. Don't make yeah, up your own words. Any proposal cause for it can only itself arise. Okay, I'm moving the screen now so you can continue. There you go. From the basic raw material, therefore, it must either be part of the basic raw material or be a product of it. If it is part of it, then the basic raw material is being said to be a cause of itself. If the cause yeah, is a product... Yeah. Uh, uh, well, slow yeah. down a bit. Yeah, it's fine. Just slow down slightly and then continue. All right. If the cause is a product of the basic raw material, then an effect is being said, paradoxically to cause its own cause. A circle of a very vicious kind is thus described. Therefore, to say that what there is is self cause is speaking without bias. To deny that it has a cause at all. Thank you. I think we'll pause there with that paragraph and then let's discuss. So, 
So when we finish reading, we then go around and ask people what they think about what we've just read. So we're going to go uh, one at a time. Uh, let's start with Omrajete, uh, you read it. Do you want to comment first before we, we come back to you or do you want to, you want yeah, to come I'll back to you Yeah, I'll pass it on. I'll pass it on. I find it some heavy, heavy, uh, it's heavy yeah. metal and it's heavy metal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and that is why we ask for the slow reading so people can mm, digest Because it. when I read slowly, I don't really digest like when I read and, and consume faster, you know? Mm, that's yeah. understandable. When you read for yourself, read as fast as you can. And yeah. when you're reading, then you slow down for us. Okay, mm. let's hear from Brother Michael first. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, I, I think, you know, what my thinking is, is that the basic raw material, we have to define what that is. Because we're, that's the topic that we're discussing. And what we're saying is the principle of sufficient reason is saying everything can be explained logically. That's the principle of sufficient reason. So this basic raw material, which we haven't defined as yet, but I think we need to define before we proceed from this chapter, is what has caused it. And what he's saying in this paragraph is that it has caused itself. So that the, 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 the principle of sufficient reason has been upheld because we want to know what has caused the basic raw material? That's what the matter is in the world and the space and in the air and everything. That's the basic raw material. What caused it? And what is the explanation for it to be there? And then the, the, the principle of sufficient reason states that everything must have a logical explanation. And the logical explanation given in this paragraph is that it has caused itself. Thank you. Mm. Thank you for your thoughts. We'll come back to Does anybody that want to criticize that or say uh, don't worry, wrong? Don't, don't, yeah, don't worry, Michael. We'll come to that. <laughs> it's your thinking. We we appreciate it. Right. Let's go to uh, Brother Foucault uh, for his thoughts. Yes, uh, is my microphone clear? Very clear, sir. Okay, that's good. That's good. Uh, treating this idea of the principle of sufficient reason, that everything has an explanation why it is, it is and not otherwise. Is then, uh, is see, from what, what I'm really feeling is that, um, you know, I think Krumah, he's trying to um, present like a comparison or maybe a compare and contrast situation using the philosopher Thales' um, position of water as the primordial element to try and say that this is an example of a physical component or an atom without necessarily talking about an atom. That's what I was kind of feeling when I was reading that section. And then, um, you know, he also talked about Berkeley's idea of spirits as being the contrast to um, Thales position of water. So that when we're coming now to this um, particular chapter, what I feel is that he's kind of like trying to contrast those two positions without necessarily adopting one. You know, philosophers will bring out like he's saying it um what does he say he says that if it is part of it then the basic raw material is being said to be the cause of itself so you would relate that if you're saying that from Thales position that water is the basic component then how would you get to the point that you would assume water caused itself if you're going to take instead the idea of berkeley's ideas of spirits and put it also in that same position how would you now get to the position of concluding that the spirits cause themselves, or you see, and then he continues to start to explain as we're going further that it becomes now circular reasoning, because he says here that um, essentially, if you continue to, actually, I think mean, I'm, I'm I'm already going to the next um, paragraph, but if you continue to compare and contrast the two concepts, it becomes kind of like ad nauseum. You don't actually get to a a, a final conclusion if you use both of the two concepts you see that's how i'm reading the passage me personally if you go mm -hmm. further he starts to bring in the idea of pantheism and compares and contrasts to that and then rules on the idea of deism and atheism as we get to those ideas i think i'll be able to link it more to this short uh paragraph but i don't want to jump out of where we've already read those are my own reflections though yeah excellent thank you brother for your views so we've heard from brother michael we've heard from brother Fuqua. Let's hear from Sister Shireen, please. 
Mr. Shireen, unmute yourself so you can share your thoughts. Um, let's all remember that you can always pass and then we'll come back to you later. Right, Mr. Shireen is not ready, so we'll go to Sister Ida. Um, Sister Ida is also having trouble. I love what uh, the last brother said. I understood him as he was going. Um, but do I understand um, a circle of a very, uh, sorry, circle of a very, Carry on. is just described. I think, um, <laughs> I don't know, because it sounds like it's, um, uh, he's asking about the raw material and if it's part of um, a basic, just like I said, part of the basic raw material, then I, I think he says it becomes a vicious circle in like, how's it caused? I think that's what he's saying. Um, uh, oh, I don't know. To me, this was just going backwards and forwards in um, what was causing it, but, um, um, but he wasn't sure, or there was not a real definition of what the cause was. So, mm. um, Thing. Yeah, I thank don't know. You. I think that's what yeah, I, I that's was fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's fine. Um, at, at this point, let's bear in mind that two causes have been have been suggested. The, the, sorry, let, let me just mute brother Dan Belly. He's unmuted himself. There is the materialist cause that Thales has proposed. That's one. And then there is the idealist cause, which Barclay has proposed. So these are the two fundamental causes. In other words, uh, those are the two causes. So let's bear that in mind. Uh, but I don't, brother... think, I don't think he described uh, which was which, which belonged to which. So I wasn't quite sure that I understood. I think that right. was my problem. Thank you. Yeah, it's fine. So if you, so brother Michael, uh, if you recall, uh, drew our attention to the fact that the Thales explanation is a materialist explanation. And the, the explanation by Barclay is the idealist explanation. It's idealist because it's saying that spirit and their ideas cause uh, is a basic cosmic raw material. But as Thales was saying that the basic cosmic raw material is water. If that is the case, if you take water, and the question becomes well, where does water itself come from? And that's where the problem starts. The vicious cycle starts. Is whatever you give as the explanation for water, you know, as a cause of water, then the question then becomes, what is its cause? And so on. And so it goes on and on and on. So brother uh, Foucault has, has, uh, has suggested in his presentation what, what could happen. Uh, but the resolution of this is in the notion of of the primary cause, you know, that that even if we have two causes, which one is primary? By primary, which one is first? You know, not in the sense of the, the chicken and the egg. So which one came first, the chicken or the egg? You say the chicken came first, and how did the chicken come? So, but one of them is primary. Is it is it matter or is it spirit? So that is resolved later. Uh, all right. So I'll pause there and let's hear from others. So we've heard from, from Sister, Sister Ida. Sister Shireen, if you're not ready, I'll come back to you later. But let's hear from um, Sister Lawrence. Mm. Okay, Sister Lawrence tried to understand all because she's French <laughs> and she has many problems to understand all the texts of Krumah because they will really not translation in French. But I try to understand, but I can understand about the basic raw material. For me is um, the written uh, Before you continue, Lawrence, before uh -huh. you continue, Lawrence, before you continue, um, yes. as you're a teacher, maybe you can help us to see how whether it is translatable into French. <laughs> Is that something that we eh? can do? You know, <laughs> maybe we should be we should be doing that. Um, if, apart from I, the fact I, that I can... it has, yeah. Do you know it has never been translated into African languages? Maybe CSG must take up that that project. That mm. we must 
Ah, we must, oh, yes, very we good. Must, but, we must, yeah, we must good. lead the translation of Constantinism into African languages, including uh, the modern and foreign languages. So maybe that's something we, we need to do. I mean, already, if you recall, we looked at the fact that those who are blind or those who are visually impaired can, uh, because they can't read, can actually listen to Constantinism using um, uh, uh, technology that is available. And I think Brother Pigeon and Brother uh, Michael led that, and then we have that now. So if someone is visually impaired, they can still uh, listen to Constantinism. Uh, so uh, uh, the Kenyan writer in Gugi, is he in Gugi Wationgo? Um, uh, Gugi, yes, he has always, he's the one that has been calling for Africans to translate major documents into African languages. But uh, mm -hmm. our new colonist leaders have not yet woken up to the need for that. Anyway, that's just a, a, a brief comment on, on could we have this in French? Uh, Sister Lawrence, please continue. Thank you. Yes, I think it's very important to translate in African language because English, French is a colonial language. <laughs> mm. And yes, and uh, it's necessary that a lot of people can have access to this, uh, this, this book is very important to translate. But the problem is because I have managed a faculty the problem is to find um, uh, someone who can do the translation in other language and who have the motivation to do it. And uh, I'm, I'm coming back about uh, Kuma. I think that he talked about, uh, when he said basic raw material, uh, he talked about the references we use when we talk about philosophy. And uh, we have uh, Western, uh, we have, uh, we have, um, we use um, um, <laughs> a philosopher uh, of Western country, and that uh, we are strange, uh, of, we are stranger, mm -hmm. we are strange about this. We can't live it very well. I don't know if you understand because my English is really not good. Uh, no, it's fine. Uh, no, don't worry, comrade. Just continue. Brother, sister, continue. Don't worry. It's better we'll, we'll than our you. French. Don't worry. Your, your, your English is better than our French. Please continue. Well done, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Yeah. And uh, I think um, its references is, is not a part of our conscience season. The Western philosopher uh, are not part of our consciousness. And when he talk about basic world material, uh, maybe he talk about the indigenous knowledge, uh, the, the African philosophy, uh, the, uh, the philosophy of Muntu, Ubuntu, and uh, I have forgotten the the the, the other. <laughs> yes, so it's all that I can mm. say. Mm. Excellent. No, thank you very much for your thoughts. So uh, your thinking is important to us, as it is to you, and we value everyone's thinking. Uh, don't worry about the language barrier. We will get through to the essence of what you are saying. So thank you, thank you very very much. If you had, if you were doing this program in French. As Michael was saying, believe me, some of us can't even participate because we don't, we can't even speak French. Let, let yes. alone understand what they are saying. So, so well, well done that you are, you are sharing with us your thoughts in, in English, which is, not, which is not our language. Uh, do you want to add anything else before we move on to someone else? No, 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 it's all. Okay, <laughs> thank you very much. Um, um, so it's interesting, Sister Lawrence, that you mentioned um, the, in terms of the cosmic raw material, you mentioned um, African philosophy and what is it that um, what is it that uh, uh, Africa is 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 made of or made from? Now this uh, came up uh, last week uh, as Sister Ida uh, raised the question of um, um, of the shortage 
um, of this cosmic raw material. And she raised a question, well, isn't that, hasn't that translated into the shortage of raw materials um, globally, which in the case of Africa, we find Africa has a lot of uh, scarce resources. And, that, and so that what has happened is that uh, the cosmic raw material, um, uh, although there was enough to create the universe or the cosmos, um, clearly there wasn't enough uh, to go around every continent. So Africa being fortunate has a lot of this, this, uh, uh, this, this, this minerals, minerals and resources that have come from the cosmic raw material through what is called categorical conversion. So, so the point you raise is a very important one and, and Sister Ida raised it uh, last week. So thank you very much for, for raising it. Um, so let's move on now to, to uh, Brother Mafafa. Mafafa says he's on the road and he's listening to the uh, ear, uh, to the oh, ear phone, so, so he can't continue. speak. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. No worries. Uh, let's go to the reader of that paragraph, Brother Jete himself, if he can now say something. If not, we'll come back to him. Brother Jete, would you like to contribute to your own reading or we'll um, come back to you? You see, because this, 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 you see, to reason on this, I said, uh, uh, today is my... I'm not following, first day, following the your class. First time, yeah. You know? yeah, I've not been following the class. It's like my first time in class. And yeah, there, so there you go. You have to out of attend for that JT. For that JT, you have to attend classes, please. <laughs> 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 All right, thank you. Okay, so yeah, so listen and then, yeah, so be part of it. If you want to say anything, feel free to let me know and then you can say what you want to say. Uh, so let's go something? to. Yeah, is that brother? Well, yes, brother. Yes, yeah. because I was just thinking, you know, if we reason in contemporary terms of the context of what mm. Kuma is um, referencing, when he talks of sales and uses water, the current materialist conception is actually um, based on the Big Bang theory. If we want to look in terms of causality of the universe, as he tries to speak about this um, sufficient principle and talking about how the raw materials of the universe would have all have been created at one particular point. In the scientific context, they would speak in terms of the Big Bang. But if we want to use an idealist argument to be um, representative of um, something contemporary, I think we might go towards um, God, actually. That the idealist conception that could be somehow synchronized with this argument of ideas of spirit. Because when we talk of spirits, we normally they say that God is a spirit in the Christian context specifically. So I wanted to bring this up because it pricked my mind as the sister was speaking about, um, you, brought, you brought this point about one sister talking about African philosophy. You see, Kuma in the first chapter of this, uh, I mean, in the first paragraph of this uh, chapter, he actually introduces this idea that we even discussed in the, the, the forum that Greek mythology and um, Roman mythology bases essentially the African man's subconscious, our whole academic curriculum and knowledge reality structure of the world is based on these two particular civilizations. But if we want to talk of African philosophy, African spirituality, African religions, African mythologies, essentially, then we might see that we would come up with variant um, origin concepts of the universe, which I, at times I question whether Kruma was open to. Because as I read even through consciousness, I, I kind of times feel that he has a real strong Christian orientation. But reasoning perhaps from some of our African spiritualities, um, in the Ifa tradition, they talk of Oludumare being the source of the universe. Oludumare is not distinguished as being a male or female specifically. So if you're not personifying God, then you can arrive at a point where your ideal concept of a universe being created by spirits would not necessarily need to have a sufficient reason. You could say that it was somehow just a... We, 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 we live in an infinite reality. These, the, these, these concepts, they're even common in the yoga teachings when they talk about the, the Brahman being the source of uh, creation and, and, and reality. So I just wanted to throw that out there, that if we use African mythologies to interpret this, then we would come up with a whole different field, which we don't see Osajefo actually speaking in the context by making it seem like we're limited to just the material and the idealist argument. 
Mm. But then all you've said, brother, at the end of the day, go back to the same question. The names you've mentioned, whether Brahma or the other one, are they spirits or are they matter? So ultimately, whatever mythologies you come up with, you need to resolve that and answer the question, is this, is this person or thing, is it matter or is it spirit? Yeah? So, so, so yes, you can say that in this, in this book, Nkrumah doesn't go into all the different uh, stories of, of the origin of the universe. Fine. But whatever story of the origin of the universe you go into, ultimately, you have to come to the question, what is a cosmic raw material? Is it a spiritual raw material, which is spirits and the ideas, or is it matter? The use of Thales and of Berkeley are just examples that he uses. But like you said, he could have used uh, uh, the Buddhists or, or the other. He could have used those, yeah? And you equally can use them as you are doing now. And then you then, then need to tell us, when you mention these names, are they human beings or are they spirits? And, and how are they, or how do they constitute the cosmic raw material. As far as the Big Bang is concerned, that is the physicist view of the origin of the universe. But that in itself does not tell us the origin because if you are saying that the universe comes from the Big Bang, that means that something preceded the Big Bang. And what is that thing? What is it that thing that preceded the Big Bang? that made the Big Bang even possible. So to summarize, you still, at the end of the day, have to confront the question, what is the cosmic raw material? Why is it important for us as Africans? Why is it important for Pan-Africanism to resolve this question? Because understanding where we come from is fundamental to the struggle. As part of the, the Christian, uh, if you like, uh, uh, promotion of Christianity, you are told to, to, uh, to not um, keep your treasures in this world. You know, you must look to the future, to some coming kingdom called the kingdom of Christ. And so, and in that kingdom, there are many, many mansions. So you don't have to, don't worry. Don't worry about building mansions in this world. You know, give your resources to the priest or to whoever. Give a donation. Just worry about that. And in giving to the priests and the priesthood, what are you doing? You are storing up treasure for yourself in this heaven where God will assign to you this mansion. All that is to take, take your mind away from your resources in this world into another world. We will come to that. This is what I'm talking about is part of the theism, uh, the deism and atheism thing. And all that is being done to get the African to misfocus from their resources, which is being stolen daily. We hear that aircrafts land in Congo there are airstrips in Congo that we have never heard of. And what do they do? They come and they load our resources into these air aircrafts and then they fly off. Every hour, this is happening. Do we hear of it? No. The whole Rwanda genocide was linked to this. The removal of a body from office was linked to this. Clinton's coming to Rwanda was linked to this. But how many of us know? So, so we have to resolve this question. And we, as Africans, are very fond of saying, ah, don't be too materialistic. As if water doesn't matter. As if food doesn't matter. As if where you live doesn't matter. As if 
the shoes you are wearing doesn't matter, as if it is okay to walk hundreds of miles just to fetch water, as if it's okay for our girls not to be in schools, but to be fetching water for men to have their baths or for brothers to have their baths and so on. Matter does matter and matter is crucial. So at the end of the day, we have to resolve this question because that is at the heart of the struggle, the struggle for the African mind. Are we going to focus our minds on, on, on spirits or are we going to focus our mind on our resources that have been stolen? So the cosmic raw material is crucial. The final thing I would say is that, you see, the, the, one of the reasons why people find consciousness challenging is that they don't know where it's starting from. They don't know its starting point. We say it's a philosophy, that's an ideology. But where does it start from? Ah, it starts from understanding the universe in which you live. The origin of the universe in which you live, that which defines you as a human being, that is what you need to understand. And once you understand where you come from in terms of the, the structure of the universe, so for example, the fact that all of us human beings come from, come, come from hydrogen, oxygen, and carbon. You know, we haven't met any human being yet that is not made of these things. And therefore, if that is the case, that means we are all equal in terms of matter. We will have the same material origin. And that is why the human race is only one, because all the, the entire human race comes from the same matter. And that is why human equality is founded on philosophy and ideology. So, so, so brother, I, I hear you. But I think at the end of the day, whatever mythology you could come up with, you must still confront the question, so is it matter or is it spirit? You need to resolve that for us because that which has been used to steal our resources till date has been the, the, the idealist philosophy. They keep us preoccupied with things of the spirit. You hear of things like spiritual warfare. You never hear about material warfare or materialist warfare, you know, and so on and so on. So we need to resolve that. And, and philosophy in retrospect is, is attempted to help us and Kruma is trying to help us as Africans to resolve this. There is no doubt, and I think you will agree with me, that all of us, including myself, were all brought up on spirits and magic, uh, miracles, and so on, you know. And this miracle has to be done, for example, the miracle of Jesus, Jesus turning water into wine. And that is seen as a miracle. But the fact that the palm tree turns water and sunlight into palm wine, that is not a miracle. If you ask me, I would say that is even a bigger miracle when a tree that can talk, that can see, can turn water and sunlight into palm wine that you can then tap and drink. That, that seems to me to be a bigger miracle than a human being turning uh, water, water into wine. But be that as, as it may, be that as it may, at the end of the day, we have to rescue our minds from where it has been located away from our resources. I've said a lot, um, I'll pause uh, because we are still uh, trying to uh, hear what people think about the paragraph we've read. We've heard from Michael, we've heard from Mr. Ida, we've heard from uh, 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 Brother Ajete who wanted to wait. We've heard from uh, Brother Mahfa can speak. We've heard from uh, Brother, Brother Fukua, who has been very, very uh, uh, um, uh, involved, which is, which is really what we like. We want brothers to be involved in it. But this is a philosophical discussion, so we need uh, all of us to be involved. So thank you very much uh, for your involvement, Brother Fukua, that's excellent. Uh, we haven't heard from others. So let's go now to Brother Renumi. Right, okay. Thank you, Chair. I think I think for the paragraph words, I just want to adopt the the presentation of uh, brother, brother, brother Fokwa. Yeah, Fokwa. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I go with him into to 
with uh, his comment on the paragraph. Mm. So, so what do you think? I know you go with him, but what do you think? Why yeah, do you I, go with him? You need to explain. Yeah. Share, yeah, share, your, yeah. Think, share your thinking with us. Mm. Yeah, my thinking is that the paragraph is uh, is like a maze of is it the cause cause and effect. So if we keep going in on and out about it, so maybe when, when we read further down, we might need to we might get more gist about what is going on. Okay. All right. So do you want to add anything else, or that's it? That's it. Okay. Thank you very much. Let's go to uh, Sister Shireen. Greetings, greetings. Um, greetings. I do one as well. Um, to be honest, I'm a little perplexed on this. Um, I'm not perplexed. I'd say I don't really have much to um, contribute. Share your, share your perplexity, sister. <laughs> um, it's just like, from what I see, it's um, everything is everything, isn't it? to some extent. So with everything being everything, it's um, it's a saying that kind of takes us to a place of one thing always leads into the next. So where it talks about a, a vicious cycle, a circle of a very vicious kind is thus described. It's like, it's as if there's um, a cyclical um, uh, rhythm to, to everything and things always come back in a cycle. Um, and that's yeah, that's that's what I get from this. Mm. And 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 Shireen, what you said goes to the heart of, um, of of if you like the, um, um, the 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 universe, the cosmic raw material, and whatever else has evolved, or or been created, or come out of that, because. At the end of the day, what perhaps we are saying is that, you see, when people say that uh, God created the universe, um, then they are in effect also saying that, that everything that you see in the world is an extension of God, you see, mm. or has come out of God. So if you replace God with matter, by matter I mean uh, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, uh, mm. dark matter, dark matter and, and those things, then you're also saying that the universe that we live in is an extension of that. Whether mm. in that case, in that case, the cause of the cause is itself, is itself the cause. In other words, it has no cause, which mm. is which, which another way is to say that everything that we see, or uh, the universe as we see it, or uh, the cosmic raw material of the universe has always been here. Yeah. That the idea of beginning and end does not apply to the cosmic raw material. Mm. It has always been there. And that's what you said about everything being part of everything. Yeah. <laughs> it is very, yeah. very interesting. So, so thank you very much for your, your, um, your contribution. Uh, brothers and sisters, let's keep our mind on why we are looking at philosophy and ideology. We want, we want the resources of Africa to be used for Africans, which is not the case at the moment. That's why we are oppressed and suppressed. We don't have enough money. We don't have enough resources. Uh, our children are not in school. Some of us are living abroad because we can't, we can't live at home uh, and so on and so on and so forth. So this needs to be resolved. Uh, let's go to brother Ajay Tewona has his hand up. I think he's ready to speak now. I've been, I've been following the flow of the conversation and I see um, that is, uh, I remember something that I, I read from Haile Slassi when he said material world and then the spiritual world must be balanced. So somewhere in our mind, we must be able to find a place where we balance spirit and matter and then move with it and then, you know, make it manifest in our life in that manner, you know? Mm. Yeah. Yes, yes. Sorry, yeah, finish what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I finished. I was just like how to balance the two and manifest it in our life, in our daily practice, you know, and make yeah. it I'm count just, like that. Yeah, it's like saying, I just it's like saying that you as a human being, 
you as a JT, you yeah. must make sure that uh, the city called Ajete, yeah, if you see yourself as a city, yeah, the the headquarters is the is the head, the the, the brain and other parts of the city, that uh, the city must not be divided. If a city is divided, then the city will not will not stand. So, so so it's like saying that you must uh, balance all parts of yourself. Your your head cannot be wanting to go south, and then your heart wants to go east, and then your feet wants to go west. Then well, what will you do? You know, your head wants to go south, your 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 heart wants to go east. You know, we hear things like follow your heart, follow your heart, which is a way of saying that uh, unite yourself behind your feelings. So at the end of the day, yes, you are right. We have to we have to have, we have to be ba balanced individuals. And that is balancing our thinking, our feeling, and our, our physical body. You know, you hear things like uh, the, the, the soul is willing, but the body is weak, which means that the, the, the totality of the person is not able to unite around, around one thing. Uh, but I like to come to, to money and finance and wealth, because right now, the wealth of Africa uh, is somewhere else. Africans are somewhere else, and we haven't been united with our wealth. You see, and we need that unification of of wealth so that we can use it to develop ourselves, because Africa's wealth is not developing Africa. You know, it's developing everybody else, but not Africa itself, and that that needs to happen. Uh, we will discuss more of that on Saturday in terms of the unification, uh, liberation, and development of. Africa. All right, we've heard from, I think, everyone. Let's hear now from Brother Coco. So, Brother Jete, thank you for your, your, um, your contribution. Uh, Brother Jete, uh, Brother Coco, let's hear from you. Sister Malin and is up, Chair. Sister Malin and is up. Sister Malin is not, oh, she's, yes, she's here. Now, I'll come to Sister Malin in a moment. Uh, Brother Coco, uh, Coco has, has gone off again. He keeps coming in and out. I think he has IT challenges. So, let's go to Sister Malin. Is Amalin, by the way, welcome. I didn't realize you had joined uh, us. Hi. If, yeah. No, what I wanted to say, have you noticed all the African leaders are now speaking up? The um, Gambi, uh, the um, South African um, uh, uh, president is saying, you know, the wealth has got to be, uh, they don't want no more um, export of all the um, raw material in raw Africa. Materials. They want to the finished product. Um, the Ugandan one is also speaking out, and um, oh gosh, where's the other country? He said he's Ruto, not. Ruto, Ruto, Ruto of Kenya as well. Yeah, yeah. And, and, mm. and and if they could all come together somehow and all unite, and you know, it could be very powerful. So because they've mm. had the Ugandan one there for 35 years as their puppet, and now he's decided to turn against them. So, you know, and speak up and do the right thing, because uh, yeah. I don't yeah, know if he's- The thing is, Marlene, you, they, they were only speaking up now because the dollar, US dollar is what everything was bought. All the oil in the world was bought with US dollar. It's been devalued. They should have spoken up 20 years ago. But just because the, everything is being devalued and the US currency is going to zero, that's why they're speaking up because it's causing inflation in their countries and they're having the oh, right. Hold on, to hold on, Michael. Hold on, Michael. Right. You've got a point there, but also they're realizing that their goods are valuable and, you know, their raw material are extremely valuable and it's not made. Um, benefiting their people. They should have said that people. 30, 40 years ago. Well, they I'm weren't saying. in the position because the world was in a different place and they were telling us that they were um, creating anarchy in the world and lying to us and we were believing it. They can't tell us those sort of things anymore because we have access to in information much easily 
and we can communicate with each other. Before, all we would do is read what they put in their media and we would absorb it and look at Africans and say that they're stupid. And that's what they made us all believe. So I don't accept that, Marlene. You see, these world leaders were all educated in the elitist schools. That's what yeah, they're, 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 they're always you're not wrong aware. about that. The only reason now we're speaking up is because the US yeah. color is destroyed. Yeah, yeah, hold, on, hold on, hold on, Pigeon. Hold on. It's not, Michael, it's not let a new awakening. I don't accept that. Uh, well, one at a time, one at a time. Michael and Molly, one at a time, please. Michael, I'm making my point, and I don't, I know you've got some points in what you're saying, but I've also, what I'm saying, you know, is saying what has caused them. Part of the reason is that it's very complicated, it's not as simple as we would like to make it. 30 years ago, you were young, I were young, and the information we were getting is that Africa, Africans were unintelligent, was incapable of ruling themselves. They had no brains. That's what we were being told all our lives. That's why we were ashamed of being called an African. Sorry, what Even was Brother an... Michael's question? What was Brother Michael's? Brother Michael, can you repeat the question? Can I reiterate? Because what she's saying is that what I, no, the implication of what Marley is saying is that there is an awakening in the world leaders. 30 no. years ago, I always considered myself, I'm 63 now, going on 64, I always considered myself an African. I was never ashamed well, to how say. how many so of that, us no, have considered me, ourselves an African Those years world leaders, ago. they are worldly educated. It's not a new learning situation yeah. for them, no. The reason why they've come out yeah. of the closet is because That's the whole world the economy reason, is going to throw and it's causing riots in their country and they can't run their countries anymore. That is the only reason why. It's not because That's I'm just part learned of the, the other reason, day. Michael. That's one at a time, one at a time. One at, a time. one at a time. One at a time, please. That's not the whole reason, Michael. That's not the whole reason. Okay? The world of okay. change and people feel more stronger and able. Well, years ago, all I remember hearing was troops going in Africa to do this and do that because the Africans are needing to be controlled and needed to be, you know, whatever, you know, and that's what we were told. I remember every couple of weeks here in Britain sending troops into, into Africa to when they were uprising. We've always been people that fight. But they find I would ways like to distinguish between the ordinary people's knowledge and the world leaders' knowledge. There's two the world different leaders, things. but they've controlled the and world leaders. My argument is: African 30 leaders. years ago, they always knew, and they went along to go along. It's just that the situation has become intolerable. That's yeah, because all it they were afraid of the them. West. They were more afraid of the a, West. They were afraid of the populations of their countries now. That's all it is. They are quite not happy really. to go along that's, with this That's process. not the only reason at all. <laughs> yeah. I think all you've right. got Thank it you. wrong, Michael. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for that spirited discussion between uh, Brother <laughs> Michael and Sister Marlin. Uh, <laughs> just so everyone uh, knows, um, this is um, the kind of debate we had between Michael and Marlin um, it's one of the things we encourage in our class. As long as we listen to one another and then we come back, that's fine. And, um, uh, you know uh, and in the past, uh, Sister Marlin, hold on. Sister Marlin, hold on. So in the past, we've had such such debates. And sometimes it's gone on for 10 minutes and we've just listened to the discussion and we all learned from it. So right. Sister Marlin, thank you very much uh, yeah, for Yeah, you know what? I didn't your finish point. because Michael interrupted me and I hope <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't anymore. Sister Marlin, I'll, that's fine. Sister Marlin, I'll come back to you. Just hold your thought. I'll come back to okay. you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's go to Brother Pigeon, um, and then we'll come back to Sister Marlin uh, later. Um, Brother Pigeon, the cosmic raw material, as we have read on the screen. Right. What are your thoughts? <laughs> it's very interesting to listen to Sister Marlin <laughs> most of the time, anyway. Uh, uh, to, uh, think back to what you were reading. Mm. Oh, oh, I, I, I've been struggling to understand it clearly. 
Because it's okay. like what was said. If, if you want, suck on that. You, you, you yeah, go if you to want the... time to think we can, we can move on to the next paragraph. As Brother uh, Fukua had intimated, uh, more comes out in the next paragraph. So we're happy to move on. And, and then, um, because the next paragraph picks up the same theme. No, so I I'm, want to comment. I'm going to, you do want to comment? Do you want, do you want to hold on? What would you like to do? Yeah, I want to comment only in one sentence. If there is a okay, go on. One... Uh, okay, uh, you say that in this, there's a broad hint on as one can desire that the question of origin of what there is has no affirmative answer. So actually, basically, what you've been trying to explain up here was coming from what there is, because it was said there are two questions. Mm. So what there is and yeah, how yeah. what there is mm -hmm. was the part of the question. Mm. So when we brought the issue of mm. cosmic raw material, it came in at that aspect of the cosmic raw material, be it water or be it spirit. And therefore, mm -hmm. as, as we move along, you see now there's a, there's, 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 a, there's, a, there's a point here saying that trying to answer this take us more of a navisha circle. So it's like starting again, what came first? And as mm -hmm. you have said, even before, anything that occupies space is matter. Anything that occupies any space is matter. So <laughs> whether it is matter or it is spirit, it's becoming something that I'm still struggling to understand. Yes, thank you. In, in fact, I think in fact, what we all have to understand is that space itself is matter. You see, I, what I mean by empty space, you know, when you have empty space, that is still matter. Time it will come. To, these things are all dealt with in, in this book. These are big questions. Um, so let's move on to the next paragraph, and then that will uh, help us to move along. So, Brother Pigeon, read for us, please. I would like to say I was asked last week if I would read this week. Are you happy to read then? I know Brother Pigeon is not reading yet. Do you want to read, more Michael? More than happy, yes, more than Please happy. Please then read. Excellent, read a paragraph on the screen then. Is that in this, there is a broad, a hint as one can desire that the question of the origin of what there is has no affirmative answer. Nor indeed is the vicious circle the only tribulation which awaits an affirmative answer. If a cause is suggested for the cosmic raw material, this neurotic insistence on a cause will open up an infinite regress about the cause of the cause of the cosmic material, and so on. Okay, move on to the next paragraph. Let's read it together and then we'll, uh, should we? Yeah, let's do that in sum. In sum, then, that denial that what there is has a cause is a claim of an exception to the principle of sufficient reason. Or in tones of moderation, it is a caveat that is principle is only applicable inside the world and not from outside to the world. It applies only to transformations of the cosmic raw material, only to its products. To apply the law to the cosmic raw material is to fall into the more of contradiction. Even to say that, there, that it is its own cause is to make a merely formal salutation to the principle, for there can be no scientific or significant difference between a thing being self-caused and it being uncaused. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for that. Right. So let's discuss um, these two paragraphs we've read. I'll start with Brother Fukua because I think he intimated um, when he was making submission that um, he had anticipated this paragraph. So Brother Fukua, yeah, build on what you had said before and continue your your thoughts. Yes, as, as he was reading, I was already smiling towards the end. You see it because when he mm. brings up this idea of where there can be no scientific or significant difference between a thing being self caused and it's being uncaused. You see, if we're valuing now the two 
examples that he's presented us with, you see it. Uh, we're looking at Thales in his example of water and the idea of Berkeley trying to present the ideas of spirits. Like he's bringing it out. Are we going to keep looking at the source and cause of what would have been the material source of the universe? Or are we going to keep looking for the cause of what would have been the ideational, the, 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 the spirit? That would have been at the, the, the source of the, of the universe. In one way or another, you can't reconcile to actually have a solution between the two. And even if you do conclude that, like he's saying that there is no cause, you're still going to find yourself having certain contradictions, essentially, just like uh, Brother Christian was pointing out. Especially when you start talking about time, when you want to look at the linear concept of time, if there is no cause for the universe essentially there's no beginning then how are we capable to actually experience the linear progression of of time as 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 human beings me and my own reflection I try to that perhaps maybe because human beings are finite beings it's difficult for us to conceive a, a concept of an infinite reality that which there would be no need for a cause to be in the beginning but still you have to reconcile that i mean true for is deeper because you, if you if you say that there's still an infinite, you have to get to a point where you would still arrive at, at cycles of infinite projections of still that universe. So it's it's complicated. At one point you have to. I'm getting the point that my brother is bringing out. For the sake of being able to define reality in a context that human beings can actually be progressive, you have to now find yourself isolated, even if it's just a cycle in this infinite concept, to a point of cycles that you would conclude that the value of a material reality, it leads you to substance and and and, and being for us to have purpose. That's that, that's what I'm reflecting as I'm I'm reading this this, this section because think about Krumah his English here. He packs a lot of sense into his sentences. So when you read even one word, you'll reflect on it several times in in in, in relation to what it means, and then still again what he said prior to try and bring out your idea of what he's trying to, to, to explain to you. And it caused a lot of deep reflections. I'll be very honest. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. they, they, told, they told us that we don't think, or that we can't think, we Africans can't think, and that they have to think, do our thinking for us. And, and, and here you are, yes, you are, you are um, affirming that we do think and think very deeply. In fact, when Constantine was first published, they denied Nkrumah, um, Nkrumah um, wrote it. <laughs> and then those who were there in Flagstaff House, when Nkrumah explained it on a blackboard, he had a philosophy club in Flagstaff House that was the president's residence. And Nkrumah would meet his club and that's when they would discuss. And there was one meeting in which uh, a gentleman called Eric Heyman, who was there, when Nkrumah laid out the framework of consciousness on the board. And he said, look, <laughs> of course Nkrumah wrote it, and I was there myself when he laid it out. So, so, so you are making the point that um, the, the book actually is, is very deep. And this is why we are saying to Africans that um, let's, let's return to ourselves, because this book is about us. You know, uh, pe people like uh, people like uh, the guy you mentioned, the um, the Buddhist guy you mentioned, brother. Uh, what's his name again? The Buddhist guy you mentioned in terms of the origin of the universe. Okay, uh, the, no, I, I think I just cited they they have certain archetypes that mm -hmm. like um the the Brahmin concept in the yoga tradition. They just use that as like a symbolic reference mm -hmm. to what would be. The, the, the source of reality. And they even avoid using terms like nature. That's why I even put it in the chat that mm. if you read the philosophies, mm. the value of terminology changes in such a way that pantheistically, if you want to value the concept that even materialistically, we, we want to look at the, the atom as being the basic building block of what we accept to be reality. I like how you brought up dark matter and it still goes deeper, but it's still mm. in, in, in its rawest form energy, essentially. And if mm. we're acknowledging that by the law of thermodynamics, that energy is, cannot be destroyed, it can only transform. Mm. Mm. Then yes. the source of the universe then 
would have to be some type of an energetic type of 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 of, of force, you see. Yeah. Which so, so I just call it so I just call it dark matter. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah. Anyway, yeah. anyway, um, anyway, the the I was making reference to what you said earlier. So thanks for reminding us. Uh, Buddha, Guatama Buddha, as he was called. I mean, we know he was an African. So we we'll always talk about the universe as a breathing. Well, that's what Buddhists believe that the universe is is like uh, it's like the lungs. It's a breathing thing. It breathes in and out. But that's what the universe is. It's not a person. There is no deity like a personal god and so on. And that is a breathing thing. <clears throat> the point I'm making is that this person was an African. So, so, so when you look at all the deep uh, thinking, it's, it's the African has been at the heart, if not the source of deep thinking. And if you are one of those who believe in the, in the uh, teachings of, of, uh, of, of the nation of Islam, you know, and then you, you believe that the, the black man is God, then you are then moving into a situation where actually when you talk about God, you are talking about the black, the black self or the black person or the black human and so on. Anyway, um, the time is 2039 and we've, we've read a lot. We focused in this, oh, Sashiren is gone. Uh, we focused on this um, um, uh, uh, class. Uh, we have not dealt with current affairs. We just focus on the book. So I think we have, uh, we've, 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 uh, we've covered a lot. Um, but the Koko has not come back. Uh, we've read some new paragraphs, but uh, Fukua has um, um, uh, showed, uh, shared his thinking with us. Um, let's hear from uh, Brother Michael, please. Isaman, I'll come back to you in a moment. Yeah, um, let's come. Um, let's hear from Brother Michael on the well, paragraph we've read. Yeah, on the paragraph. We've but the read, two yes. paragraphs. The two paragraphs. Yes. Well, yes. Um, we'd say he has concluded that um, that to deny that, that, that there is a cause is to, is to claim an exception to the principle of sufficient reason, or you can create a caveat which is inside the world. So he's in, so he's saying that it's, it, there is an exception to so it only applies inside the world and not from mm. outside the world. To the inside, so it's so I think there's this um idea of God and heaven being introduced later on. I think that's what he's 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 um trying to put across there. Um, it, so he's saying it only applies to the transformation of the cosmic raw material to its products. So that is the introduction of the idea of categorical conversion. And he talks about a contradiction there. I'm, I'm not quite certain what contradiction he is talking about. I think if it's not the inside and outside world, I'm assuming that's the contradiction he's talking about. Um, that's about the best extent of my um, comments that I can make. I think this, the sentence structure is a bit difficult for me. And that's what I'd like to say at this stage on that particular paragraph. Mm, thank you very much, Brother Michael, for your thoughts. Let's go to Brother P. Uh, Sister Marlene, let's come to you and then we'll go to Brother Pigeon. Well, what I would say, it could be even focusing on what is going on now with raw material that um, Africa has and it's been taken away from them and others have benefited from it and now they've awakened and they're not going to be bullied anymore, hopefully, because, you know, assassination is waiting for these people. And that's what they've been doing for donkey years um, to try and keep what belongs to them to develop themselves. And I think this paragraph in some way is relating to things like that. And Nkuma had been aware of it um, ever since. And, uh, you know, part of what Michael said, that they have been aware of it, but how to deal with it, that's where the problem lies. But now, with the changes of the world and information can get to people more reliable and more accessible, things hopefully 
will start to change and will have to change. Thank you very yes. much. Thank you, yeah. Sister Marley, for your for your erudite and um, yeah, very enlightening comment. Uh, as mm -hmm. usual, we thank you very much. Mm -hmm. uh, let's now go to Brother Pigeon, please. Brother Pigeon. Yes, to my understanding um, is that uh, there's almost now a concept coming in of infinity that you cannot explain from where it starts to where it ends, as, as some have alluded before, but also is trying to also question this aspect of principle of sufficient reasoning. At what level does it apply? Is there any level that goes beyond explaining the origin of something? So if it cannot actually be explained as is said here, it means that uh, there is even possibility of not the principle of sufficient reasoning not applying to some extent. And maybe probably the infinity aspect comes in now that you cannot actually tell where it starts or where it ends or what dimension of the almost to close to what I can call a dead end. Thank you. Uh, thank, thank you very much. Uh, just a, uh, a piece of scientific uh, information. As we know, uh, the cosmic horizon is the, is the area of the cosmos beyond which uh, we can never see um, because of the speed of light. The speed of light um, cannot reach there. Nothing coming from there will ever reach us because the universe is expanding and, and the speed of light cannot bring that to us. Um, and so there are things that uh, we will never know because they are way, way beyond us in terms of what we can see. Uh, we can never see those things because they are beyond the cosmic horizon. Uh, we do live in, a, in, an, in, in an infinite universe. But that comes back to, to, to the question. So what is Nkrumah telling us as Pan-Africanists whose resources continues to be stolen, not just physical resources, but our material resources, including human beings. Brother Pigeon talks about the brain drain. You know, that is still happening. People are still, uh, uh, um, you know, we are still losing resources to the continent. And, 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 and so, so the principle of sufficient reason, it turns out only applies to things inside the world, not to things outside the world. But if that is the case, then we Pan-Africanists should be able to explain all that is happening to Africa in this world. There should be nothing that we cannot explain. We should be able to explain where, who is stealing our money, where they are stealing the money to, where the money is going, how we can retrieve it, how we can fight back, how we can win people around, and so on and so forth. So clearly, we have the principle of sufficient reason telling us that everything that is around us is explainable. So we must move away from magic, miracles, and those things that really are a way of denying that there is a way of explaining things. That some things are just a miracle. You can't explain it, you know? And I used water into wine. So Jesus, we are told, turn water into wine. And some of this is a miracle. How did they do it? Well, but trees do it all the time. The palm tree does it all the time. It takes water from the ground, takes sunlight, and turns it into palm wine. There's no miracle there. Just that we don't, we don't understand, or that we, we, don't, we can't explain it, or we don't know how to explain it. But everything is, is explainable. The current situation of Africa can be explained. So, Sister Shireen, you've come back. Well done. Okay, let's hear from Sister Shireen. And then Brother Coco will come to you after that. Brother, my phone, Brother Christian, my phone died and I've just managed to recharge it. So I haven't really... Excellent. Excellent. Uh, but can you see the screen? That's yes, fine. If you, can't, um, if you can't comment right now, no worries. We can come back to you later. Um, yeah. Is that okay? okay? Thank you. Thank yeah? you, Brother. Oh, Thank okay. You. Brother Coco. Uh, 
hello, hello, comrades. You managed to make it. <laughs> uh, really, really uh, interesting discussions tonight. Unfortunately, I'm still traveling, but I can have my two e That's what they call it. Um, the, the bottom line is that everything has to go to the principle of strategic tourism. If it doesn't, then something is wrong. And uh, what you just said there, everything has to be explainable. And what they have been teaching us or feeding us for generations was that there were miracles. And those miracles came from outside this realm. Whereas everything has to be explainable. And there is that question by the young man, um, Ibrahim Traore, who said, how come Africa is so rich in everything? It has the sun, it has the soil, it has the water, but the Africans are poor. It's one of those questions which need to be explained by us Africans. And it has to fit within that principle of sufficient vision. If it doesn't, then something is wrong. And I guess from what we, this discussion has been going, it's more or less the same thing we are being taught or reminded that we can think for ourselves. We can think for ourselves and we can find reasons why things happen or why things don't happen. And we can start making things for ourselves. It's, it's as important as that. So I think Sister Malin was, was, uh, was this Sister Shane who was uh, finding hard to explain what the, uh, the exception is. There is no exception. The raw material has to be, there has to be something that created that, that raw material. We have to be able to explain where that raw material came from. And we can't just, you know, say we wait for the experts to, to explain that to us. Then that's when we, we delegate thinking to other people. Is that important? I think that, that is my take from all of this. Thank you. Mm. Thank you very um, much, uh, Brother Lucy. Coco. Let's hear from Sister Malin. Can you hold on, please? Thank you. Um, let's hear from uh, Sister, Sister uh, Lawrence. Uh, I'm so excited because Sister Lawrence has joined us all the way from Madagascar. Can you believe it? <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> Mr. Lawrence, yes, what do you think? Uh, Sister Lawrence, uh, we have a lot of difficulties to <laughs> uh, but, but I follow. You understand, I follow. I try to, yeah, good. Yes, yeah, I try good. <laughs> yeah. No, good. me. Oh, by I by think, the way, do you, you, uh, you, you have the book? Uh, you have no, the book. I never read. No, I never read the book. But I'm going to Good. ask the book to P come Yes, uh, excellent, P P P P P P brother. P yeah, brother Michael or brother PG will send you the book. Yeah. So yes. if, if if you put your e email in the chat, I will send you the book. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, 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 carry on. Share your thoughts. <laughs> yes, because yeah. uh, it's very interesting, but. Um, um, I think that um, uh, that I can understand that is uh, oh yes is uh, how we can uh, we can have uh, the conscience to be human after uh, after a long period of colonization and slavery and uh, he explained all of this any part of his reflection start with um, the, um, the creation of the, 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 the big bomb, the creation of the world and the mythology. And <laughs> me, I have a question. I know that in Africa, there's a lot of mythology and I am an African descent. My ancestor was uh, a, a slave, a slave. Uh, during uh, the 19th century in Wayne Island. And uh, the slavery, uh, the system of the slavery um, is very um, inhuman, 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 cruel, cruel. Inhuman, yes, in, yes, inhuman, yes, inhuman, yeah. cruel. Uh, they have lost their name, their Africanity. And now, for now, uh, the, all the African descent. Uh, would like to go back, return in Africa, but 
The problem is we have a lot, a lot of reference to the occidental cultures. And when we want to, to touch the African cultures, there's a lot of mythology and the slavery trade. We have, we do, with the slavery trade, we do not know where we come from exactly. <laughs> mm. And yeah. and there's a lot of uh, mythology in Africa, but uh, and uh, it's very difficult to 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 understand where we are from. We are really in another sphere. We are really Pan African. We have the impression that Africa is a un unity and uh, without diversity. But we know there are diversity, but we can't have all the the cultural aspect of Africa. Mm. I don't know how to explain it. Yeah, you're no, doing no, a very we, good job. We I follow really, you. I really, yeah, we, you yeah, really Sister, hit Sister Lawrence. No, thank you very yes. much. We 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 are following you. We understand what you're saying. You're talking about diversity, our origin as Africans, the fact that there's a lot of mythology, therefore where do we come from, is that very clear, and so on and so forth. Now, thank you very much for drawing our attention that whilst uh, um, we are talking about the cosmic raw material, we should also be thinking about our own origin as Africans. Uh, absolutely. Apparently, we, apparently the whole human race uh, is from Cape Town in South Africa. That's yes. where we started from. Yes. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> no, thank you. Thank you very much. So we've heard from um, everyone. Um, um, so let's see who hasn't spoken. Uh, I think everyone has now spoken. Can, can, I, can I say something? Um, so in the, hold on, Sister Marlin, hold on. Um, yeah. Yes, yes brother, yes, brother Pigeon. I've sent to our sister Lawrence both audio and soft copy of the book. Excellent. Oh, so Lawrence, you've you, received, you. you've received okay, both, yeah? You. So we hope you will uh, you will join us um, uh, going forward. Uh, we, uh, yes, we have I we, we have been, yeah yeah we have been eleven today, which is which is really good. All right, I'm going to stop talking now. It's only five minutes, four minutes left to the end of the class. I hand over to Brother Pigeon to make any announcements, and then um, and then can we'll I, end can the meeting. Can I say something quickly? Uh, that I, is down I to Brother Pigeon. Long. All I wanted to yeah. say. Sister Lawrence hit on some good points when she said, because of a colonization and slaverism, that is what has helped the con that is what has held the continent back because they took out some of the best people from the continent and we lost our name, we lost everything. So for that, a lot of us did not believe that we were African. Then the European were very cleverly telling us negative things mm. about Africa, like their calendars, they're ugly, they're old. The things they told us was endless. So a lot of us removed ourselves and did not want to be African. So then they created this divide and rule. And now, finally, all of us are coming to our senses. And as I said before, knowledge is more accessible to a lot of us. So now we're thinking differently and that is what making the change and the leaders them are waking up. 30 years ago, um, there was, things were differently. We didn't even know our history. We didn't even know we came from Africa. A few of thank, us did, thank, but we need to yeah, think you. about the mass. Thank you, Sister, Sister Mali. Okay. Well, yeah. Okay, thank Somebody, you very much. Well, well said. Comrade Pigeon, yeah, please. Mm -hmm. okay. If you listen okay. to Bob Marley, he made it quite clear. So over 30 years ago that we were African. Um, Michael, leave Marlene alone. Yes, Michael, come stop on. Going on Michael, about Michael, leave Marlene alone. Marlene has said her piece. Marlene is fine. I've just supported you. Marlene is fine. I've just supported you. All right, Brother Pigeon. <laughs> and I will talk to Michael after also. <laughs> okay, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll let him see things the way okay. he is. <laughs> okay, thank you very much, everybody. Uh, we do appreciate your presence. It was a lively class. Of course, uh, for this continuation of this discussion that uh, Sister Marin and Brother 
uh, Michael is serving, we are having on Saturday a conversation where we put things into context. And actually, we try to put either his philosophy or any ideas of and any other idea in terms of, you really invite you for the continuation of class on Saturday, this Saturday, 1900 uh, GMT, probably it's GMT. I'll be sharing the link through uh, all means possible so that we can continue this discussion because it is until we understand it. It is until we deeply understand it that we now can now actually mm -hmm. come up with our route outside this quagmire we are in. So thank you very much, everybody. It was a pleasure having you. Sister Lawrence from Madagascar, she has joined our, our, our new group and she has a copy of what is required. And therefore, we are looking forward to many people joining us. And I do appreciate the, you all for this opportunity. Thank you very much. And may we meet again on Saturday. Brother Kwame. Yes. I uh, would you like to stop, stop the recording and then we can end the meeting here. Well, that was a marathon. Thank you all.